Good morning, good morning. It is May 7th, 2020. It's Throwback Thursday on Society Shame. Doing a podcast, all right? Doing an audio and I'm doing a visual, all right? So we can get both genres and both venues. Today is May 7th, 2020. Welcome to Society Shame, social media for social change. Today's Throwback Thursday. Today's Throwback Thursday, and we're going to go way back. We're going to go back to 1986 when uh, Kwasi Mfume was in Congress. Kwasi Mfume signed off on the Bill Clinton crime bill. The same day, the same time that y'all signed off on that crime bill, y'all made that three strikes you out. Mass incarceration in your prison industry. This is what this documentary and the movie was all about. It's about race and racism. I was doing this on Falls Road. I came here straight out of the penitentiary of 1991 on an interstate compact. I was on an interstate compact in uh, 2011, no, 2010, 2008. Yeah, 2008 to 2010, I was on an interstate compact. I'll get paid for that. We're gonna go back to throwing back about slavery, all right? This is William Steele, all right? And the Underground Railroad. I named my store the Underground Railroad in 1991, Shorty's Underground Rib Shack. And it was to pay homage to our ancestors and the struggle and the and the struggle. Because like I said, this ain't my fight, this is our struggle. We've been struggling in America for 400 years. So my fight and the struggle is the war on drugs. Like I said, Kwasi and Fumi signed off on the Bill Clinton crime bill. Bill Clinton said it was wrong. Now y'all trying to do the same thing with Governor Hogan's gun bill. Throwback Thursday in 1986, I turned in guns and drugs to the police at the police station in Waukegan, Illinois. That was my Malcolm X moment. I shot the town up for 45 minutes. I walked from 822 Wadsworth to Jesus Name Baptist Church. Uh, you can contact Waukegan Police Department. You can contact Angelo Kyle. You can contact Sam Cunningham, Mary Cunningham, Mayor Rockingham, Mayor Savanjan. You contact anybody who's anybody and they'll tell you the same thing. I stood up against the war on drugs because it's the death of our community. It's, it's enslaving our community. And it's been doing it for 400 years. You just reinvented slavery with the 13th Amendment. Now, throwback Thursdays, I was gonna make a movie and a documentary about the war on drugs in 2007. I went back to, to make the movie, I gotta go get all my paperwork. All right, I had to get all my paperwork from 1986. 1986, you can Google the state of Illinois versus Dwayne Davis, all right? I showed the power of the money, the power of the drugs, and I showed you the politicians to get paid off of it in Lake County, Illinois. I named car dealerships. I named people with positions of power that participated in the usage of drugs, but didn't want to suffer the consequences behind it. How'd that sound? In 2007, I went home. No, in 2006, my son was murdered in Zion, Illinois. So that put a cog in the the making of the movie. But while I was in Illinois, I went to file this right here. Throwback Thursdays, that was filed January, all right? Lake County, Illinois. I went to get my, my material from the 1986 case because I needed that material from the 86 case. Y'all had a jail, y'all had a, uh, y'all had a lot of information there. You had guns there that aren't there anymore, but you kept the cocaine and you kept the weed. When I had my court hearing on January the 31st, 2007, you treated me real bad. You locked me up at 2 p.m. and charged me with terrorist activity. You said I threatened to blow the courthouse up. You took me in custody and held me from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. and knew that I didn't do this. You did this and you held me for them eight hours and you threatened me. You tried to intimidate me. You tried to get me to do a lot of things that I just wasn't going to plead, plead to. You let me out at 8 p.m. I ran from the sheriff's office, the, 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 the county jail, to Jesus' name because my nephew was there, Clarence Price. I jumped in the backseat of his car because y'all left me out there. I didn't have no car. I didn't have no transportation. Y'all took me from Zion. There ain't no public transportation. It was like 12 degrees outside. What y'all did is y'all wanted me to go out of the police station at 8 o'clock at night, and then y'all was going to do something to me because I was an out-of-towner. Y'all was going to rob me, roll me, whatever. But y'all wasn't trying to let me continue on this. 
All right. Now, the next morning, I went to the FBI because charging me with terrorism was a serious allegation. So I went to the FBI over on Roosevelt Road in Chicago, and I turned myself in, and I gave a whistleblower's application. I told him I was making a movie. I named the names. This right here, 1402 Lochner. That's Senator Mikulski, 1402 Lochner. See the date? 2009. I gave y'all a reentry program. I gave y'all a reentry program for ex-felons. I don't know what uh, Alpha Justice was doing in 2009. I don't know what uh, Nicole was doing. I don't know what Karen was doing, but I know I've been a prisoner's right advocate since I came to Baltimore. Now, Mr. Leon from the, right there, Throwback Thursdays. I went to the ACLU in 1986 about the war on drugs. I went to the ACLU in 2007. And I went to the ACLU in 2011. And I've been dealing with the ACLU ever since. Tony Holiness, Amber Taylor, Sergio, uh, Joshua Harris. But no, no, we y'all want to talk about the war on drugs. I left the toilet at the ACLU because I got tired of this shit. Y'all respect that. Clean that shit up. This Schellenberger, like I said, throwback Thursdays. That was in 2007. All right. So throwback Thursdays, y'all called me a terrorist. But this is what I am. I'm a cook. I'm a chef. That's Shorty's Pit Beef. That's 2003. Martin's West. I work for Cal Ripken. I work for David Irwin. I work for Ed Molotolo of the Ravens. I met Mar Ted Marcha Broder when they first started with the Ravens. I know Governor Schaefer. I know Governor O'Malley. I know Johnny Oleski. I know GOP Carter. I know Pratt, the Comptroller. I know Brian Frost. I know Doug Gansler. The question is, is who I don't know. Because everybody eat my food. That's Heartfest. See that? 2003, Shorty's Pit Beef. 2350 North Joppa Road. See that? Heart Fest 2004. We raise over we raise over a hundred and something thousand dollars for that event. All right, and I give that back to the community. This is John Johnny United's foundation. Turnabout. Turnaround. That's my storm. West Joppa Road. See that. This is Throwback Thursdays. Laura A. West, Director of Turnaround Incorporated. I've never committed any crimes here. I never did nothing wrong here. Only thing I did wrong in Baltimore was be black and question the powers that be. And that ain't against the law. Throwback Thursdays. That's Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King gave me the campaign of public shame. I can't shoot you like I, I back in the 80s. I can't act like I was in the 80s, but I can still get the same message across. I can disrespect you. I can call you out. I can pull your card. Like I said, I'm not from Baltimore, so my allegiance is straight to the ghetto. My allegiance is straight to the projects. My allegiance is to the people in the streets. My allegiance is to the drug dealers, the hoes, the prostitutes. My allegiance is toes that's trying to get money and live. My allegiance is to the hustlers. This guy Schellenberger, Throwback Thursday. This guy Schellenberger, that's a subpoena. This guy Schellenberger. And that subpoena was against Jake Davis. See that? Dwayne G. Davis. It was against Jake Davis. Because while I was locked up in Illinois in 2007 to 2008, Jake Davis, James Hammond wrote an illegal lease and they took over my property on Falls Road. I ain't got a problem with taking over the property. But I got a problem with them stealing money out my bank account. I was married to Margaret Davis. I still am married to Margaret Davis. We've been separated since 2004. See that? Mr. and Mrs. Davis. That's me. That's my wife. She's still my wife. We ain't together. We don't like each other. We can't stand each other. But until I find another wife, that's my wife.
When I find another wife, we get a divorce. Throwback Thursdays. Go look at divorce court. I got the video. I'm going to post it up after here. Go look at divorce court. We was on divorce court. Throwback Thursday. I was on the house of cards. Yeah, I was on the house of cards. I was the barbecue guy. Look it up. Check it out. Throwback Thursday. Let's go back to 2014. We're going to go back to 2014 because, like I said, this is about Baltimore. Baltimore rewired. We're talking about the illegal war on drugs and the criminalization of poverty for being black in America. Told y'all when I started this, I was making a book, writing a movie, and I was going to sue you. So now I got the books done. Now I'm making a movie to go to Netflix, Hula, Pixar, Disney, Hula, Universal, whoever want to buy it. I'll sell it over to Russia if I got to. But this is about uh, right here. Whistleblower's application, the President Trump, the Senate Judiciary, the House Judiciary, and the Supreme Court. Now, yesterday, y'all seen the letters from Chief Justice Roberts. Today, you're going to see the submission to the Department of Justice in 2014. Because like I said, if they end the war on drugs, it's going to end the cash flow that America don't want to discuss. Y'all got a lot of money off of illegal drugs. Y'all make a lot of money off of opioids. And y'all test them opioids on prisoners and inmates. All right? And I told this to a whole lot of people, and I proved my point. Like I said, go to Peter Angelos of Peter Angelos' law firm. I, a I tried to file a class action lawsuit. I also went to Fox 45, and they gave me back my flash drive today. Mm, where is my flash drive? The flash drive, they gave it back to me today. Rachel Aragon gave me back the flash drive. So tomorrow, everything that you see me doing today, I'm going to give Rachel Aragon this tomorrow. This is the Public Justice Center. All right. North Charles Street. So I'm going to show you. I gave the Public Justice Center a whistleblower's application. I gave the Public Justice Center this, and I gave the same information to the Inspector General, Baltimore City Inspector General. I got him on videotape. I also gave it to the Department of Justice, Robert Herr. I gave it to Robert Herr. I gave it to uh, Patrick Sizgero. I gave it to Richard McFeely. I gave it to Richard McFeely's supervisor, Mr. Dugan. I gave it to William Lewis Davis, which is my brother. And he's a postal inspector in Los Angeles, California. I gave it to him for insurance purposes. And something happened to me. Anything happens to me, everybody on these papers is responsible. Because my next game, after I get this movie done, this is a movie, so I don't have to, sign, I don't have to change nobody's names. I don't need no movie releases because they're all public individuals. I don't need no movie releases because I can use it through social media. Social media through social change. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Google, MySpace is where I started at. AOL and Gmail leave a paper trail. So here we go. It is dated October the 16th, 2014. All right. And I got to blank out this address. I'm just going to fold it in half. All right, here it goes. See that? That's the Department of Justice. October 16th, 2014. That's my Department of Justice ID number. I blew the whistle on Kathleen Pugh. I blew the whistle on the gun task force in 2010 to the Baltimore City Police Department. All right. I gave it to Gansler. I gave it to Bernstein. I gave it to the city solicitor. And I got that paperwork, too. Now, they destroyed all this paperwork, but I got mine. They can't produce theirs. But I can produce the mail receipts. I can produce it. You can produce everything. Anything I'm talking about, I can produce. And I ain't Houdini. I'm who done it. Just gonna block out the address. Received 2014. That's certified. That's the office of the Attorney General Department of Mental Health and Hygiene. And that's the office of the state's attorney's office. Who was the state's attorney in 2014? Because Marilyn Mosby got this. Nick Mosby got this. Hassan Giordano got this. Ivan Bates got this. Anthony McCarthy got this. Congressman Cummings got this. This is the Department of Justice. My paperwork in order. The University of Maryland Law School got this. It's about your judges. Judge Pearson, Judge Turnbaugh, Judge Souter. 
All right. Racketeering and fraud in the court. It ain't that's them. It's Governor O'Malley's wife, Katie O'Malley, and, and Renner's court. And I got I got what I need to prove without to prove what I'm saying. You go to Karen York, it's called the criminalization of poverty. It breaks down how they put you through these things so you can't get what you got. And they use their course to do it. You go to Tony Bridges, delegate Tony Bridges. He was Governor O'Malley's liaison back in the when I started this. I recorded phone calls to him. That's why he ain't got nothing to say to me when he see me. See something, say something. You don't say shit. Uh, oops. Throwback Thursdays. That's 2011, November 2011. That's a court order for my property to be returned. That's unlawful conversion and fraud in the courts. That's theft by the state. Theft by the state. You took my truck, you took my computer, you took my evidence, you took my fucking jewelry. Because I had a lot of jewelry. I had gold chains, I had white gold, yellow gold, I had rings. You feel me? I had watches. I had clothes. Y'all made me homeless in 2011. I didn't have nothing but a pair of flip flops, a pair of blue jeans, and a white t shirt. I had nothing. And you think I shouldn't be bitter? Man, I should have just snapped on y'all. Well, like I said, I made my mama promise. Revenge is a disbursed serve code. It's 2020. I got my store back. I don't have my store back, but I got my standings in the community back. I got a truck. I got a grill. I got a computer. And I got y'all where I want you. I got you in the Department of Justice. And we're going to see if you just be us. But that's Scott Schellenberger. Right there. All evidence submitted to you. 1986 jailhouse diary. I gave Schellenberger 1986 jailhouse diary because I was blowing the whistle on Lake County. Y'all had me on an interstate compact. I was held in, I was staying in Maryland, but I was charged in Illinois. Y'all tried to extradite me back to Illinois, and I told y'all kiss my ass, I wasn't going. So when I told y'all I wasn't going, I gave Scott Schellenberger the jailhouse diary from 2008 to show him the treatment of the inmates and why I wasn't going back. Scott Schellenberger didn't press no charges for me to go back. Greg Bernstein didn't press no charges for me to go back. The attorney general didn't press no charges for me to go back. The state of Illinois didn't ask me to come back and I wouldn't go on. Ty Jackson, Fox 45. See that? I left toilets outside of Fox 45. I left them outside of WJZ. I left them outside of WBAL. I left them outside of ABC2. I left him in front of the Baltimore sign. Joe Giordano got the toilet I left in front of the Baltimore sign and it was filled with money. It was paper money. It was fake money. And we made that toilet right after the Freddie Gray because y'all spent a lot of money in the community, but the community didn't get that money. Now y'all talking about the money came up missing. We told you back then who stole the money. But because we told you it didn't matter, Fox 45 tell you and you care. That's the Baltimore Sun, chief editor. All right. Y'all can read, can't you? Baltimore, the city to read, read that. I was coming after the Democratic Party. This is all about the Democratic Party. All about the Democratic Party and the money you make off the war on drugs, the money you make off of Keith Davis Jr. You're getting $45,000 a year. You don't handle that man for five years. That's $200,000 the state done made off of that innocent black man. Kelly Davis supposed to fight for her husband. I'm fighting for everybody. Kelly Davis, Tawanda Jones, anybody that got an issue with Baltimore City, dog, I'm on their team. And they call me and I come. Barry Sims, David Collins. Like I said, my paperwork in order. That's Justin Burke, ABC2. I got Justin Burke on video. I put that video up and then Justin Burke tried to get the video put that took him down. You can't get it taken down. I didn't ask you to sign no movie release. You did that as your own accord. Justin Burke was holding the video that was exposing Governor O'Malley back in 2008, man. Justin Burke, Christian Schaefer, Barry Sims, David Collins, Jane Miller. 
Fern Shen, Justin Fenton, Justin George, Ian Duncan, and go play with your kids. Don't play with me. See that? Throwback Thursdays. How many more people want to see this? Now, this is going to be a good movie because it's a good book, because it's a good look. I'm going to leave you halfway shook. See that? That's my doctor here, Dr. Hassel, MD, the guy that treated me at Spring Grove. He's also my customer. So when we was at Spring Grove and I had to do my final outtake interview, I had to go through a volley of tests. And he, he was like, well, why are you here? And after I told him everything, he's willing to be a witness to everything. And it's right here. Respectfully requesting my case file. You get my case file from Spring Grove Medical Hospital. You go get my phone records from Spring Grove Medical Hospital. And you're going to see a lot of this. Throwback Thursdays. Society shame. The campaign of public shame. Criminal investigation. Internal revenue services. All right. Case number. Whistleblower. All right. Because the Department of Justice got a case file on me in Illinois, and they got one in Maryland. They got one from Chicago, Patrick Fitzgerald, a whole lot of them. I'm an activist. That's why they got a case file on me. I'm not a terrorist. I'm an activist. Baltimore Sun, chief editor. All videos, storyboards. I had 13 storyboards. The state took all 13. One of the storyboards was called Portraits of a Letter, and it was all about the media. It was all about the media. All right, that's WJZ. WJZ did an hour and a half interview on me at Spring Grove Medical Facilities. That hour and a half interview, I told a lot of the truth that they wanna lie about. That hour and a half interview is gonna be evidence for a federal investigation. That hour and a half interview is part of my documentary. Just like Tiger King, I'm fighting that fight. Only difference is I'm not locked up. See that? Throwback Thursdays. All right, if you go to Mike's shoe, Gigi Barnett, Stein Saunders, and Adam May. I gave each one of them a video. Like I said, it's a ghetto Da Vinci code. You got a little bit, you got a little bit, you got a little bit. You got a taste, you got a taste. You put all them tastes together, you got a hell of a flavor. And we put that flavor right here. Case number. See that case number? K11-1091. See the date? Received. Throwback Thursdays, June 1st, Honorable Judge Souter. Throwback Thursdays. And my lawyer got this, attorney-client privilege. This ain't no privilege, dog, because my lawyer participated in this. Throwback Thursdays, February 28th, 2019, Johnny Oleski wrote a letter to the Department of Justice asking for a full investigation into my kidnapping. The Department of Justice, Robert Herr, Robert Harding, Ain't did nothing yet. Here goes the letter. Here it goes. Y'all can see it. Seeing is believing. The devil is in the detail. So am I. See the date? See the conversation? See the signature? That's Johnny O. This ain't manufactured. This is true. So when I say that I'm making this movie about Baltimore, it's all about Baltimore. These Department of Justice subpoenas and whatever i don't need a movie release just gonna go to the paperwork i'm gonna say what i say about you you take me to court sue me for defamation of character or libelous statements do whatever you got to do but i'm gonna make sure this gets done this is dwight pettit yeah dwight pettit warren brown j wendell gordon the murphy law firm uh malcolm ruff i gave all of y'all this ivan bates 
because y'all supposed to be leaders in the black community, but y'all ain't trying to do this. How much money do y'all make off of the war on drugs? Let's be honest. How much money y'all make? How much money y'all make off the war on drugs? Because y'all defend these individuals, but y'all ain't talking about ending the war on drugs. You end the war on drugs, a lot of your client list going to dry up. You end the war on drugs, a lot of shit going to change in the courts. But since you're not going to end the war on drugs, I'm going to send the people that's getting paid off the war on drugs to jail. Just like that stop snitching video. You sent all them brothers to jail. So let's see if some of these 52 politicians can go to jail. They don't go to jail. I'm going to publicly shame them. I'm going to publicly shame them. Just like I did on February the 7th, February the 6th. I'm going to publicly shame you. I'm going to publicly shame you like I sh shaved Chief Johnson. Y'all seen Chief Johnson? When I see Chief Johnson, I chase his ass out of wherever I'm at. I check his ass. I can't stand Chief Johnson. He's a racist. He's the he's the 2000 version of Bull Connors, and that ain't no bullshit. If anybody know who Bull Connors is, that's Chief Johnson. Because y'all think in Baltimore County, y'all could treat black people any kind of way, do anything to them, slap them around, beat them, shoot them, kill them, incarcerate them. I'm not him. When I see Chief Johnson, I chase him out. I chase Chief Johnson out of City Hall. During uh, Kevin Davis's uh, uh, inauguration or whatever, I chased him out of Baltimore County. And Sheila Roof was there. Pam Woods was there. I chased him out. I called him out. Because he a racist. And you got a lot of racist people on your police department. Got a problem with this shit? Take me to court. Take me to court. Take my paperwork to court. Take my flash drive to court to bring your ass to court. State prosecutor. State prosecutor been knowing about this from the beginning. I turned it into, into the state prosecutor. I gave the state prosecutor the original whistleblower. I gave it to the state prosecutor before I gave it to anybody because I already know how this got to go. If I'm going to prosecute a public official, the state prosecutor got to do it. The state prosecutor got to got to prosecute Schellenberger. That's the law. That's Commissioner Bats. All right. Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake, Brandon Scott, Branch, and Coran. Now y'all seen me chase Branch. I pulled Branch out of a meeting for Tawanda Jones when Tawanda wanted to talk to him. I shut that shit down. He came out there. Same thing with Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake. I got it all on film and I got it all on video. Cause like I said, I'm making a movie about Baltimore. Rewired. Commissioner Bats and me had a sit down. So when you get to Commissioner Bats to talk about that sit down, have him do it in front of the grand jury. Have Commissioner Bats talk about how long he been knowing about the corruption. Then go to Commissioner Harris. Then go to Ed Norris with his trifling ass. Trifling Ed Norris. Ed Norris ain't gonna say nothing slick to me. Cause Ed Norris got all that. I gave Ed Norris them videos when, when he was jammed up, before he got locked up. Ed Norris know me. When he got out of jail, he knew me. When he was at CBS Radio, first started, he got the videos. That's why when he seen me in public, he just, yeah, shorty. You don't want no smoke. You don't want no conversation. Ed Norris is a, <laughs> he was a tool of that. Y'all rewarded bad behavior. Y'all reward bad behavior all the time. Call me a liar, Ed. This is the city solicitor, George Nielsen. City solicitor, Mr. Davis, George Nielsen, both of them been blocking this investigation because they're protecting the corruption. They're protecting Greg Bernstein and Scott Schellenberger and Marilyn Mosby. If they do this investigation, they're going to jail. Visitor. All right. State's Attorney's Office. That's Greg Bernstein. I need a federal grand jury for a federal investigation. This is the rest of the paperwork. I can't finish this paperwork, but uh, we're gonna talk to you tomorrow. For this next 30 seconds, uh, this broadcast is dedicated to Corrine Davis. She died February the 2nd, 2011. I didn't get a chance to attend my mother's funeral, 
So if you see me around town on Mother's Day with my dog Whitey or me wearing a pink t-shirt or pink sweatshirt, it's dedicated to Corrine. She made me the man I am. Like I said, I made a promise. and I'm a man of my word. I'm going to end this broadcast. Thank you for listening to Anchor FM, Anchor Podcast, Society Shame. May 7th, 2020. See you tomorrow. Fuck you Friday.